Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Laser tanks. Yes, you heard that right. Laser tanks are the real deal and they've been around for more than 40 years. So what the heck happened to this idea? During the peak of the Cold War and Reagan's Star Wars initiative, the Soviets actually developed sci-fi like weapons under the veil of absolute secrecy. And the results were several iterations of tanks with weaponized lasers. But their actual combat use and the story behind them might not be what you expect. Let's shine the light on yet another insane Soviet project, but one that actually came to life. In 1991, the CIA received reports of a new type of tank rolling out to the Soviet army positions. And at first, they were baffled by the reports. Called the 1K-17, it was huge. And based off the bones of an artillery tank, it rumbled and shook the earth as it moved with its advancing troops. But this hunk of metal wasn't designed to be offensive, but defensive. With 12 powerful lasers, each that could operate separately, it could target the advancing machines of the enemy, such as helicopters, jets and tanks, and disable them, overpowering their optics and blinding their operators. But it didn't stop there. It could also track and quickly take out approaching missiles, making shoot and forget air forces, the doctrine of NATO at the time, obsolete overnight. And that fact terrified the West, that the Soviets had taken what was essentially a fantasy and turned it into an actual weapon that if used would be a war crime. But to understand, we have to go back a few years to the very start and how the Soviets even came up with this insane idea. Laser tanks promised us the world of tomorrow with high-powered energy weapons lancing across our sky and making our modern weapons seem barbaric by nature. Whilst that future never happened, some futuristic technology did eventually come our way, and one of them is the incredible Squarespace Fluid Engine. And oh boy, Squarespace is the best web builder that you can use today with their best-in-class website templates and the ability to customize every single design detail with reimagined drag-and-drop technology for both desktop and mobile so you don't have to make two sites. But that's not all that Squarespace can do because every single one can also have a built-in shop to start selling right away or you can use the campaign marketing tools to start driving business instantly. And I actually do use Squarespace myself to run my online store at www.foundandexplained.shop so thanks Squarespace for powering my merch. So don't use a laser pointer to attract attention, use a Squarespace website instead. And because you're supporting the channel, you can get 10% off your first site and domain with the link at www.squarespace.com found. Lasers are a massive sci-fi trope and somehow always connected to futuristic weaponry. The 70s and 80s ushered in an era of pop culture that made them super popular with movies, especially with the likes of Star Wars. Everyone believed that the future of warfare was going to be modelled by high-energy weapons, uh, just don't give them to stormtroopers because they're pretty useless. Whilst it was fiction in America, the Soviet army was hard at work at making it reality, developing the actual laser tanks. And to the shock of the US, they had no idea what they looked like or what their overall purpose was. And this was quite the curveball. You see, in the 1960s, the Western armed forces had an optical revolution sweep their armies. Both ground and air vehicles saw the arrival of night vision and even rudimentary thermal imaging devices. Unable or unwilling to keep up, the Soviets started taking a different approach to this new technology, countering it by using powerful lasers to disable the optics and take out the operators using them. And I mean, take out for good. Thus, in the early 1970s, a scientific development center named the OKB Radunga was created in the secret city of Vladimir 30. I swear to God, this is not a plot of a James Bond movie, with the main goal of developing high energy weapons. By 1978, it was turned into the NPO Astrophysica, or Astrophysics, helmed by chief designer Nikolai Yustinov, none other than the son of the defense minister Dmitry. Justinov. 
So as you can guess, money wasn't the issue and the plan was full steam ahead. And again, it really does sound like the plot of a James Bond movie. However, this wasn't just another case of nepotism to burn cash, because in 1982, the first laser tank was actually built. Called the 1K11 Stiletto, this was based on an engineering vehicle and had a powerful single laser emitting turret on top of it. Its main purpose was to detect glare of enemy optics at long ranges and automatically emit a laser to counter them. This would fry any optic on a vehicle, helicopter or even a lasered guided missile in a range of several kilometers. But the turret of this vehicle was very slow and even though it officially entered service in the Red Army, it soon followed by another improved design. The SAG VIN was based on the Shika chassis and it featured a radar and a much more powerful laser emitter with a range of up to 10 kilometers. It could work against either targets detected by glare or radar and it was so strong that not only optics would be fried but also the retinas on the pilot's eyes or tank crews, blinding them and preventing them from doing, well, pretty much anything. And this children, this was a war crime. Development was put on hold for several years as Justinov Jr. moved on from the Bureau, but then by 1991, breakthroughs in energy technology led to the ultimate variant of the laser tank. This new vehicle was based on the 2S19 Mr. S chassis, a self-propelled artillery vehicle with a massive turret. And this was for a very good reason. You see, the flaw with the previous iterations was that it was just one laser and it could only emit on one frequency. So the Americans could get their hands on this frequency, add a simple filter over the optics and block that frequency and make this weapon completely useless. So that's why the 1K17 featured not one, but 12 different channels, making any countermeasures obsolete. They could also operate autonomously, engaging in several targets at once and switching at a moment's notice. Apart from the 12 lasers, it also featured a target detector and night and thermal visions for the crew. Thanks to its large vehicle turret, it could accommodate all of the electronics and even more importantly, the generators that could power this extremely hungry machine. And this is where it starts to get a little bit wild. Myths floated around that a massive 30 kilogram ruby crystal was a conduit for the high energy beam, but that's totally nonsense. And probably a YAG laser technology was used, which was outside the visible spectrum, operating in the infrared spectrum, so you wouldn't even see the tank operating until it was too late, and then you couldn't see it all. And yes, the 1K17 laser was probably strong enough to damage or completely destroy retinas of the pilot or vehicle operator, which again is against the Geneva Convention. The Soviets would also add a machine gun on top, but there wasn't any real protection because this sort of vehicle would definitely not go into direct combat, but rather stay behind and play a supporting role. There is information out there to suggest that during the testing of the laser, it once knocked out a helicopter's optical system at a range of six miles. Sounds pretty wild, huh? Well, there were several issues with the design. First and foremost, even with the 10 plus kilometer range that the previous vehicle had, it would need it to be 10 kilometers unobstructed. And in a real combat scenario, that's not going to happen. There'll be trees, mountains, and even dust that would be an obstacle for the laser beams. And with thermal optic technology getting better and better, the vehicle emitted heat like crazy. Modern tanks would spot it and engage at extreme long distances. And as ATGM switched from laser to radio guidance, it would have a hard time defending against threats in any slightly mountainous terrain. Yikes. And also part of the design flaw was that it could only fire the lasers in the direction that the turret was facing. And as we know with the T-90 that Russia uses today, it's not in a very effective way in combat. And last but not least, this sci-fi laser tank came at the wrong time. With it being built in 1991 and entering service in 1992, there was absolutely no money for crazy projects because the new post-Soviet Russia, well, was falling apart financially. 
With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the development of the tank was abandoned, as the development and manufacturing of the laser projection system had become too expensive and unnecessary. It truly was the second most expensive tank ever built, technically behind the NASA crawlers used to carry the shuttle at Cape Canaveral. The two prototypes were scrapped, with one ending up in a museum missing its laser technology. But this vehicle is still listed in service with the Russian army and it was never removed from its top secret list of projects, with the Russians even today guarding its technology fiercely. Why? The Soviets would develop another laser weapon called Aklavon and tested it in the 80s on ships. This was the same laser from the second laser tank, but it served a different purpose, defending the ships against the missiles at the time. However, the Russians wouldn't stop there. They would then develop a Cold War airborne laser platform on the Bereve A60. It would have a top secret use, which we'll do a video about it into the future. Lastly, the Soviets would also use the laser technology under a program called Soko Echelon. This would be an airborne laser that was used in 2009 to illuminate a Japanese satellite without damaging it and do so successfully. The idea behind it that it would be used to not shoot down satellites, but to blind them, just as the laser tanks were purposed to do. This would explain why the Russians have been so coy about revealing any technical data about its laser tank projects. And that's why I don't have any information about just how powerful these lasers were on the tank. Have the Russians actually developed a secret super weapon and simply put it on ice until an all out war against everybody? Or is it yet another Cold War era project that will only live up in a book or movie or a found and explained video adaptation at some point? Let me know down in the comments and also let me know if you want me to do a video on the airborne laser systems like the Bereave 860 and the Boeing YAL-1. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this one and be sure to subscribe for more interesting projects that will continue to bring you on Found and Explained.